Okay, let's continue our install. So we're gonna definitely need some cable housing, um, a shifter, shifter cable. Um, this is just your standard uh, shifter cable, but that actuates the, uh, the dropper post. And you're gonna need a two and a three millimeter um, hex wrench, along with some cable cutters, uh, some good nice, uh, nice cable cut, actually cable cutters, not end snippers, to cut both the housing and the cable. It's important not to fray the ends of the cable when you do this. And some type of awl or pick or something that where you can kind of bore the when you cut the cable housing, make sure it's all clean on the uh, on the end, and there's no uh, um, bits that can uh, fray the cable, and then we have our dropper post with the seat attached and the various the lever the remote and the various bits that actually make the dropper post work and some some cable ties and so let's get to it all right word to the wise before you stick one of your good seat posts inside that uh, seat post too, especially if you especially if you ordered your frame online and it hasn't been to a bike shop yet because I think this is one of the things the bike shop does is to kind of sand or steel wool or do something to really get the burrs out of the inside of the seat tube otherwise you're gonna end up with your brand new seat post looking something like this with a bunch of scratches on it now I didn't do this one this is just a spare uh, seat post that I use to hold my bikes up in the bike stand when I build them. So this doesn't really matter. There's a gentleman online on YouTube. Um, you can look up. I'm sure somebody will find the link and, and put it down in the comments below. So this is not anything original from me, but I've used similar mechanisms before in the past. But he did a really good job of explaining how to use it. I use this, uh, this clothes hanger. Uh, it's connected to a drill. And I just put a uh, steel wool pad. And so basically all you do is you um, bend the clothes hanger around the steel wool into a, into a loop there. And um, what you do is you just put this down inside your seat tube and uh, just give it a good uh, cleaning in there. And that should get rid of any of the, um, the birds that may exist inside. And so what you can do is, you, since this is flexible, you can hold the, you can hold the uh, clothes hanger with your hand, you can kind of move it around, and uh, you can just take the drill and uh, ream it out. And I've already done this one quite a bit, um, so I'm not gonna do it again. So the lever is gonna go here, uh, just inboard, and I'm actually moving the position of the lever, lever this time to be a little bit more in line with how a shifter would be. Since I have a one by 12 system, I no longer have shifter uh, in this part so our lever would be down here like a shifter uh, versus um, in the past I had it here so that will give me an idea about positioning so Next, we'll, we'll add some housing and we'll run our cable from our housing down through our cable mounts and up through the grommet in the bottom of the seat tube here. There's a grommet here. I'll score that and run it up through the seat tube. All right, so I'll give this a good cut to get us a fresh end. We'll slide our end cap on. This is, uh, I'm using Jaguar um, cable housing here. So I'm gonna slap, slide that on. We will insert it into our barrel adjuster and then just kind of loosely put it in the barrel adjuster. And I'm not gonna make any final cuts yet. I've gotta run. So definitely want to have enough cable uh, up at the top here to uh, the cables in those two tracks. You definitely want to be able to turn your wheel um, and uh, not uh, run out of cable. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually 
remove I'll remove that grommet and I'll score it so that we have somewhere to put our cable and so you get a, a grommet that looks like this it kind of has a direction to it um, so it helped kind of if you're running cable up right there's a if you're running cable up right there's a, there's a little bit of angle on the bottom that helps you position the cable up so we'll make a score in this um, X and we'll run our cable housing up through that grommet now I'll just use a uh, household razor blade and just make an X in here and I'll just uh, so once I made a little X I'll just run my uh, pick through there and just uh, notice the angle piece at the bottom so you want to run the cable up this direction kind of give it the handlebar test both ways so that way is usually not a problem this way it can be so at least Cables up here. I think somewhere along there is about right. I was actually turned the handlebars all the way to uh, the non-drive side, and that takes all the. Then I pull the uh, cable housing out of the seat tube, so that takes all of the slack out of the cable, and that lets me know that I'll have enough to actually install, reinstall in the field if I need to, and. Typically, I find that since I ride, uh, this is the 9.8, somewhere around 45, 50, somewhere in between there, um, insert, inserted into the uh, seat tube, and that leaves about this much room of cable sheathing and housing that I don't need. And so, um, once you connect this and then straighten the bars back out, then that pulls the cable housing down into the seat tube just far enough uh, so that everything works so that's the way i've been doing it um, this bike is about the same length a little bit short uh, or longer but um, that's the way i'm going to do it here too so the first thing we'll do is we will um, cut our housing and then we'll run our shifter cable up through the housing so let's do that and i'm going to cut it pretty even with the pop the seat tube and then also I'm gonna use my pick to make sure that uh, opening is good. Is this thing actually threads onto the, the cable housing, the end of this, um, and it has this little T, and that's what actually has the threads on it. You can probably see the threads inside there, and that fits inside of the connector like such. And basically, you just thread this whole thing down onto the sheath. But you first, you must remember to put the cover in on the, the sheath first. And so that's what I'll do here. Put a little bit more slack there. And so we'll insert our cover. So we'll just put it on like this. Apply a little bit of pressure. So you will feel this get tight once it bottoms out. And what you have here is the connector. And now we run our shifter cable up through. Shifter cable, uh, standard uh, shifter cable down through up and out. Um, the one thing you want to do before that is loosen the screws on the side of the connector that pinch. These are the pinch screws. Um, loosen these screws so that your cable will come out the end here. Through all the various bits there. Be careful not to pinch or bunch or force because it will fray the end. And once you start, we can see it now it's out the top. And so we'll just pull this cable through because you need some slack in the cable for it to actually work properly. Um, so take a couple turns out of it. And that will give you some slack to play with. Um, obviously temperature changes and you have to kind of sometimes reset by holding the lever down. Um, so we are now going to pinch down and I find if you ever want to remove and reinstall these sometimes and you sometimes you need you need to do that. You don't want to pinch this down too hard because it'll fray the end. It'll 
clamp it so hard that it flattens out the cable and you won't be able to reuse it. You probably don't want you to reuse this anyhow, but uh, the most important thing is that you have to get the pinch screws all the way in because this thing fits in the inside of the dropper post and if there's anything sticking out it will uh, give you some resistance and it will not go in. And so the way this works is this piece here threads into the bottom and then also the cover threads into the outer threads. So you actually put the seat on and you hold this and you thread the seat down until it stops right there. Then you pull the dust cover up, thread it on, and you should have a working dropper post. And so what I do is I'll just pull the cable down and give her a old test, press the lever, push down, your seat should stay down and uh, press it again, it'll come back up. Okay, and then we can tighten our twist ties up, or our cable ties up. All right, let's install a mud guard, otherwise known as a fender where I come from, but um, this should help a little bit with uh, the muddy rides and slinging the, the mud up on the camera and stuff from the front. So, looks like a pretty simple process uh, for uh, cable ties and they wrap around the uh, bridge between the uh, stanchions and the lowers and um, on the sides they wrap around the lowers so let's do it and by the way I did put a little bit of helicopter tape around the, uh, the top of the fork here just to protect that a little bit because um, these tie wraps can be a little bit uh, abrasive. It's two sides. It has a camouflage on one side and black on the other side. I'm going to leave the black facing up. All right. And just need to make some snippets and remove the excess cable wrap. All right. And we have a complete bike, at least the bike build part is complete. Obviously there's some things that I didn't show in this video like for example setting the sag on the front fork, setting the sag on the rear shock, then also setting the high speed and low speed compression, high speed and low speed rebound on the rear shock, and also the rebound on the front fork. And those are subjective. There's some recommended settings that usually comes um, from both Santa Cruz as well as Fox, um, depending on the model of shock and fork you have. So you can go to ridefox.com and you can look those up and start there as a baseline. I'm going to have to go take this bike out on some rides now so I can tweak those settings just a bit so I can reduce the amount of pedal bob I get, have just enough snappy rebound so uh, I get some lift off uh, from the jumps and um, also make sure that the sag is set deep enough into the travel and uh, I think it turned out really well and so um, stay tuned I'll have some videos of actually riding some trails with the bike and maybe even some suspension tuning tweaks that I'll share with you guys If it's the first time to the channel, please subscribe, and as always, skill up and ride.